All right, Fishaholic fam, welcome back to another episode. And thank you so much for clicking on this video. And what we've got going on for today is I am still on my journey up the east coast of the United States to the northeast. And in my last video, you probably saw me fish Jacksonville and then fished Charleston. And it was tough in Jacksonville because I got up there too late. So I only got like two, three hours in before uh, the weather got really stormy. But luckily, yesterday I got out in the kayak out on the ocean in Charleston and I did really well caught a bunch of redfish uh, some sea bass and I actually got a sea turtle which was crazy but if you guys want to check out that video I'll link it on the screen somewhere down in the description and today now I'm here in Myrtle Beach uh, Myrtle's Inlet South Carolina and I came here specifically because it's uh, on the way north and a little less than a year ago I actually bought this small condo with my sister Erica and my mom because uh, we wanted to have like a little investment property but then also my mom is getting pretty close to retiring from uh, Morristown Memorial Hospital up in North Jersey so we wanted to have a place that she can move south to once she retires and other than last night I've only stayed here like one other night so it was nice to crash here and then I'll probably spend tonight here as well but leave like really really early like 1 or 2 a.m. to drive up to North Carolina and fish tomorrow but anyway let's uh, head to the tackle shop I'm gonna probably go get some fresh mud minnows and then we're gonna launch the kayak in the creek and probably ride the creek out on the outgoing tide towards uh, Merle's Inlet and then also maybe go out onto the ocean and just uh, see what's willing to bite. So stay tuned, let's get after it and have an amazing day and hopefully catch some fish. trying to head out down the creek and I'm beelining it to the inlet because this tide is a lot lower only like a quarter into the outgoing tide than I thought it would be and I haven't kayaked this area in probably like three four years so I just want to head to the inlet where I think we'll be able to catch the end of the um, outgoing tide and we'll fish around the jetties and see what's biting there. And what's really cool is I ran into a local charter boat captain at the bait shop and he was saying that there's been quite a few cobia around from like the surf out like 10 miles. So that would be so sick if we could find some cobia out on the ocean. So once we hit the inlet, I'll definitely have to try venturing out like a mile or two into the ocean. A little update for you. I had to beach the kayak on the sandbar here because our steering broke for the rudder. So I'm gonna try and rig something up to fix it so we can get out to the inlet because the inlet's only a quarter mile away. And it's such a shame because I was sneaking through that little creek and I was using the paddles. I wasn't using the rudder really much or the, uh, the drive. So I didn't know that something was gonna break at any moment. And as soon as we got to this deeper channel, I put the rudder in and tried to steer and it broke, it was done, so. That's just the way it goes. That's uh, sometimes the curveballs that life throws at you. So let's see if we can fix it up and get to uh, fishing. So this string right here is supposed to connect to the rudder in the back. I already attached some fluorocarbon to this broken section and I tried to fix it out on the water, but it was too difficult. And now the difficult part is getting this fluoro to the back end of the kayak, which isn't easy because my arms are only so long. Oh. oh yeah, I might be able to just reach the fluorocarbon. Ah, oh, no. I can't get it. Ah, it's like just out of reach. Well, I can't fix it and we're wasting the morning away. It is a little after 10 a.m. right now. And unfortunately, I need a Phillips head screwdriver to 
remove this screw right there, and then I need to attach a fresh line to the handle, run it through the kayak, and then thread it through here, wrap it around the screw, and then screw that screw back in there. And if I had the Phillips head screwdriver that's in my truck, I'd be able to do it. And from here on out, I'm always gonna carry a Swiss Army uh, pocket knife, I think, with me, because I'll be, you know, one of those usually has like a little screwdriver on it, and that would change the game right now. We would have been back out there probably like 45 minutes ago. But we're just gonna use the paddles and the pedals in unison to fish and make it happen. You know, life throws you curveballs sometimes, or what's the saying? When life throws you uh, lemons, you make lemonade. So we're gonna get back out there and make it happen. It's not gonna be as easy, but that's life. So let's get to it. All right, we're still cruising it four and a half miles an hour. <laughs> so I think this will work. All right, we made it through the inlet, out by the jetties, and I've actually never fished these jetties yet before. And the North Jetty looks the best because there's a real deep channel on the inside of it. But there's quite a few guys fishing and I'm not seeing a whole lot of action, but that's probably because we made it out here right at the perfect time, slack water, so there's absolutely no current. So I'm thinking we should head further out into the ocean, maybe like a mile or so, because there's a wreck that's kind of close in and there's also a shipping channel buoy that looks kind of good. So we'll just head out there while it's still beautiful and calm. And then once the tide switches and starts coming in, we'll ride it back in and uh, hit the jetties. And uh, hopefully after enough persistence, we'll maybe be able to throw a line in and actually catch some fish today. Uh. All right, we made it out to this buoy. I'm gonna try and see if I mark anything good around it. And who knows, there could be like triple tail sitting right underneath it. Let's try dropping this little spro bucktail with uh, some gulp on it down to the bottom. Something just busted right there. All right, that looks pretty good. Hmm, something bit our tail. Now let's try maybe a mud minnow. fish on something small oh no one of the, one of these little sharks It is extremely futile out here and we're out about like one nautical mile from the inlet and I know that because I used uh, my Navionics app to, to measure the distance and I also could see on the app that only like another like two nautical miles out there is like a really good looking uh, reef and you know structure area and I wish my rudder was working dang it because we would definitely make the run out there on a day like today but you know how does that song go you, you can't always get what you want so we're gonna make do with what we got and probably go in there and there's like a drop that goes from like seven feet to like 20 like off of like a sandbar and it's like halfway back to the inlet so we'll probably try that and then try the jetties and i'm thinking like by the time we do all that like and get back to the inlet like there should be some incoming current so i'm just gonna keep grinding it out hit that that subscribe button for my struggle today <laughs> or that like button and comment below uh and com maybe comment down below uh, your 
uh, inconvenient struggles out on the water uh, that have happened recently. You know, I'd love to, to read up on some of those uh, stories. So let's keep it going, guys. Oh, just had a good hit. Oh, another good hit. Starting to mark some stuff along the bottom. Oh, what was that? Huh, that might have been a ladyfish. They hit hard. <laughs> that was cool. You see there, there's some fish right on the bottom. Oh, another one. Oh, another one. Oh, yeah, ladyfish. Phew. <laughs> well, this is actually kind of a pleasant surprise because we're not really catching anything. <laughs> so, I'll take this. A poor man's tarpon is never a bad thing. That makes great bait too. And oh my gosh, look at how lit up the screen is. There's another one. Woo! Whoa, look at that. This one's kind of fighting like a, a little bonefish. There we go. Wow, there are so many of them here. And the good thing is, is they're always willing to bite. Definitely a good fish to like take kids out to try and catch or people that you know, don't know a whole lot about fishing and they're just looking to catch something that'll bend the rod a little bit. All right, well, the current has, has pushed me back to the mouth of the inlet and we've got some really good current now sweeping around the rocks. Hey, we got a little black sea bass. All right, well, we got a big storm heading this way and it's not gonna hit like for a long period of time, but it looks like it's gonna be pretty nasty. And I'm kind of like starting to give up on this uh, fishing attempt because it's just really tough to effectively uh, stay on the spot and fish without being able to steer. So I'm trying to pat, uh, pedal and, and paddle at the same time. And I really need like an anchor today, but I don't have it so I'm gonna try and cut through over these rocks and start working our way back up the creek with the incoming tide looks like a little deeper spot right here that I might be able to like just sneak over Oh yeah, we made it. All right, we got a lot of birds diving right off this sandbar. And I think this is the same sandbar that I beached the kayak on to try to fix the rudder. And it looks really good right now. And oh, I just saw a Spanish mackerel bust on the surface up in there. There's a really nice drop off right off of this sandbar. Let's try dropping the bucktail right on the edge of it. Maybe there'll be a flounder or two. Oh, there's a fish. 
That kind of feels like a flounder too. Oh, it is. Yeah, we got one. Sweet. It's not a big one, but still cool. Really pretty colors. Now that we got one though, we'll have to try that again. And I'll try jigging with the bucktail and I'll put a uh, mud minnow on the bottom. All right, nothing else on the bucktail. And our moment chug got chopped up. Got a fish. There he is. Another little flounder. Oh, he dehooked himself. Cute little one. Oh, look at that. He went in and out of the water. All right, I am done. It was cool to get one more flounder, but it wasn't really anything to write home about. And that rudder really messed up our day today. Like my original plan of execution was to go out, get to the inlet, fish the last like two, three hours, the outgoing tide, and then fish the beginning of the incoming tide, and then kind of ride the tide back in, you know, fishing, you know, through the creek. And now that the day is done and gone, I really think we should have just stayed in the creek once the rudder broke. And then we could have probably hopped from like different uh, grass bank to grass bank and just, you know, casted our baits uh, into the channel or casted artificials. And I think that would have been uh, a much better uh, approach to uh, getting on a better bite today. But it is what it is. Uh, I'm gonna get out off the water and try and see if I can fix the rudder before we lose the light. And we, we have plenty of daylight left. It's only like 3.30. So hopefully I can get the rudder fixed. And then tomorrow I'm going to head up to North Carolina and do some fishing up there. I'm not 100% certain where I'm going to end up and or if I'm just going to do surf fishing or if I'm going to launch the kayak again. Um, if I can't fix the kayak, I'm definitely going to surf fish. But if I can fix it, then I'll probably go out in the kayak again because I think that'll be our best bet to get on a good bite. And I'm going to be back to this area again on my return trip like in a week and a half. So I'm going to try and see if we can do a little bit better uh, in the creek here or out at the inlet if we have a fixed rudder and i think that could uh, change our uh, outcome a little bit so anyway i'm gonna sign out here and i will see you guys tomorrow up in north carolina All right, we made it to Wrightsville Beach, North Carolina. Let's get the kayak fully loaded and in the water and hopefully we'll catch some fish. All right, let's get after it. We're in. This water is beautiful, really clean. All right, now is the moment of truth. Let's see if our steering works. Oh yeah. We're back in action, I think. All right, let's put on a little gulp swimming mullet. Oh, look at that. Marking some fish right there along the bottom here in 11 or so feet of water. And this inlet gets to like 40 feet, so a lot deeper than Merle's inlet. Ooh, what I'm liking is this outgoing tide is pushing right up against these rocks. And there's a steep drop right on the edge of the rocks. There's some fish here and also looks like some bait. So I'm gonna drop this bucktail just right along the jetty here. And once I get it to the bottom, I'll reel down a little bit and maybe just try pulling it up like five, six inches. And we're gonna just start just lightly jigging and popping this bucktail right along the bottom. Oh, 
Oh, just got a bite on the drop. Ah, I missed them. Oh, he, hit, he came up and hit it again. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna try a little jerk shad now. Oh, good bite. What could this be? This might be a big flounder or a redfish. Oh, it's a nice flounder. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Hew! Look at that one. That is a solid flounder. All right, there's a closer look at that nice flatty. Hew! Absolutely munched. A little half ounce spro with uh, a split tail minnow on the back. And unfortunately, we gotta send her back because the season here in North Carolina is closed. So let's pop the hook out and get her back in the water. All right, hook is out. Oh, whoa, whoa. Let's get a quick measure on this flatty. I can measure along my net here. So right there's zero, and right there's 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Let's close the mouth. I feel like a little shy, probably like 23 and a half. Sweet. All right, let's get back down there. If we can get another fluke or flounder like that, I'd be extremely happy. And if we can get on a bite of fish like that, like, you know, get a few of them, my day would be made. What do we got here? Oh my gosh, that is a really big lizard fish. Does any of you guys know watching? Are these any good eating? Because like this is one that you could probably get two decent fillets out of. If I was keeping fish, I would probably try to fillet them up and see what they taste like. Such a crazy looking fish. Ah. There's another fish, but it's something small. Ah. Oh, there was a good, another good fish, but he, I lost them. I got a really bad hook set on him. I'm trying to change my drift a little bit because the wind picked up a little more and it's hard to effectively jig this along the bottom with the current going that way and the wind pushing me the, pushing me the opposite direction. Like I'm not really getting much of a drift going. There's another one. Oh, a little pip squeak. Had a bite. There he is. Ah. 
So let's put the bucktail down for a little bit and see if we can get some fish on the mud minnows. Oh, there's a fish. Probably another lizard fish, I guarantee it. Or another baby sea bass. All right, guys, check out that big storm there. And there was no rain on the forecast for Wrightsville today. And I don't know where this storm came from, but it is just dumping a lot of rain southwest of us. And it's like half and half over our head right now. And it's just starting to drizzle. And the wind is really cranking up out on the ocean. Out at the tip of the jetty is just a washing machine. So it's really tough to fish out there still. So now I'm just trying to drift along this calm side of the jetty and hoping I'll find something else willing to eat and I'm sure there's some flounder along here so we're gonna try it and hopefully we'll be able to catch some more fish and stay dry if we end up getting hit hard we're just gonna have to hunker down and ride out ride it out see and see what happens so stay tuned The good thing is, is maybe once this storm passes, the wind will die down a little bit. Well, this storm is going to bring this video to a close. As you can see, we're on the beach now. And what's crazy is earlier this morning, this weather was not on the radar at all. And it kind of just like developed, I guess, as the, the morning progressed into uh, the early afternoon. And it's almost one o'clock right now. And I would stay out there because it is kind of slowing down, but right there is another storm. And uh, I, I, ch I decided, during this little slow period to beeline it back to the beach. And I also have to say, thank God we were fishing next to that jetty because the winds kicked up to like 40 miles an hour and it was just dumping on us. And if we were not next to that jetty, we probably would have got blown away or capsized. It, it was really getting rough um, outside of the shelter of those uh, rocks because we were on the uh, the uh, sheltered side of the from the direction the wind was blowing. And it's unfortunate that this happened, but it happens to all of us. You know, you win some, you lose some, and today and yesterday weren't the, the best. That's just the way it goes. I'm glad we got the 23 and a half incher and also that we didn't die. <laughs> so um, stay tuned, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Tomorrow we're gonna head up to Jersey and do uh, one day there and then eventually Montauk and I'm gonna be there for a few days. And hopefully the fishing's better and the weather's better. So I'll see you guys in the next episode. And like always, live to fish, fish to live.